devices, circuit, memorization, friendly encodings, and their application to statistically secure multi-party computation. The setting in this talk is that we want to support um, computation over arithmetic and Boolean circuits, so we want parties to be able to efficiently um, convert between the two. And we allow parties access to a pre-processing phase in which they can pre-compute some correlated randomness independent of their inputs, uh, which they can then use in the online phase for uh, more efficient computation. And uh, the adversary that we consider is an active adversary which may deviate arbitrarily from the protocol. And we assume this adversary corrupts less than a third of the parties. T is going to be the corruption threshold and n is the total number of parties. Um, and we also allow the adversary to abort at any point in the protocol. This is security with abort. Um, and there are standard techniques uh, that there are certain techniques for getting guaranteed output delivery, um, but that's not going to be a focus of this work um, for the sake of simplicity and efficiency. So much of what we're going to talk about is going to be based on Shamir's secret sharing, so let's do a quick recap. Um, to share a secret, we sample a random polynomial uh, where the uh, y-intercept is going to be the secret value that we want to share, and each party is going to have a distinct um, xi that is associated with them, and their share is going to be the valuation of the polynomial at their xi. And to reconstruct the secret, um, parties announce their shares, and then with all of the points, they can do the ground interpolation uh, to get the, the polynomial that goes through these points. The parties just need to check that the polynomial that they reconstruct is of the correct degree. And if you look at this equation, uh, the only real thing that might cause issue is that they do have to convert, they ha do have to be able to compute this inverse of um, between every xj and xi the difference. Um, but since we're working over a field, the basic Shamir secret sharing is over a field, uh, this inverse is always going to exist. Um, and so this all works out. If we have uh, Shamir secret sharing, um, we can actually uh, we can do a, a general NPC with it, and so we're our no we're going to use this notation to denote um, a, a sharing of value a with polynomial of this particular degree, um, and so some some properties of Shamir secret sharing is that if you add together shares, um, you get a share of the sum. And if you locally multiply, um, you you locally multiply shares, you get shares of the product. The the thing to notice, though, about um, doing this local multiplication is that the degree of the resulting share is the sum of the um, original degrees of the things that were multiplied together, and so uh, in order to reconstruct. Um, this resulting share, you need uh, the degree plus one uh, distinct points to interpolate it, which means that we would need 2d plus one parties to reconstruct. And so even if we have d is very small, eventually, um, if we do enough multiplications, we run out of parties to, um, to reconstruct. And so typically, to get more general um, computation, you have to reduce this degree in some way. And because we allow a preprocess, if we um, we can make use of the preprocessing phase to create what we call double shares, which are degree t and degree 2t sharings of a random value r. Um, and uh, for each pair of these double shares, we can reduce the degree as follows, which first parties locally compute this uh, larger degree product. Um, then what they do is they can um, take this product, use the degree 2t double share r uh, to track to their product, and then um, reconst uh, publicly reconstruct the, the difference between the two. And so uh, they they only need t uh, 2t plus 1 parties to reconstruct, uh, uh, points to reconstruct this. And once they have this, public, this uh, value z publicly known, they can use the other degree t sharing to, um, to unmask it and get uh, shares of this product.
cool. Um, so that was a shimmer for fields, but what if we want to do um, a shimmer over a ring? Um, a ring might be something uh, more natural to consider, but the, it, um, the issue arises with uh, this inverse that we have to compute. Um, it's so computing because uh, remember we have to compute um, the inverse of the difference between every single um, xi xj, and this doesn't work for an arbitrary number of parties. And what do we mean? Well, uh, it turns out that a ring like z2k um, doesn't have any subset s um, x1 through xn, where when we take the difference between um, every single uh, every single element in this set, um, that these differences are going to be invertible. Um, it, is, it doesn't hold when n is greater than 2. And um, as a side note, we're going to call a set where all of these, uh, the, diff the, di the difference of each pair is invertible. Um, we're going to call this an exceptional set. And basically, if, if you have a large enough exceptional set, then you can interpolate. Um, and there's a quick proof for why this doesn't hold, um, but how do we, um, but how would we overcome this We, um, if we do want to do Shamir over a ring? And similar to how you may use an extension field um, in the field case if your original field isn't, isn't large enough, uh, we can do a similar idea for uh, Z2K. Uh, specifically, we can do a degree D Galois extension of Z2K, um, which is a Galois ring. So what are Galois rings? Um, it's, uh, so a Galois ring GR P to the K D is basically going to be the ring of polynomials with coefficients in Z P to the K uh, modulo uh, this irreducible, some irreducible polynomial H. Um, and uh, P is going to be prime and then K is uh, greater than or equal to 1. And the Galois rings have um, there are some basic properties. The Galois rings, uh, one of them being if you set k equal to 1, um, then uh, gr p to the d is uh, gf p to the d. Another property is that all zero divisors of this ring, uh, uh, gr p to the kd, constitute uh, the ring's only maximal ideal. And uh, the last property that we're going to mention is the one that um, uh, enables us to do shimmer secret sharing. It's that when you have uh, a Galois ring, p to the kd has an exceptional set of size p to the d. And so, remember if we have a large enough exceptional set, we can interpolate. And so, um, uh, this just turns into um, we can set d large enough to give us a large enough set. And this is the uh, this is sort of the basic idea behind a recent work of ACDEY, um, which adapted uh, the multi-party um, uh, multi-party protocol of Beerly Over and Hurt, um, which is a Shamir secret sharing based protocol that uses um, the double share uh, double shares from before to to do their degree reduction. Um, the ACDEY adapts the protocol of this paper to um, to uh, to work over the work over rings like Z2K uh, using Galois, Galois rings. Um, what they do is remember if you, um, since they're working over, they want to work over 2 to the K, you can set your um, your ring to be uh, GR2 to the KD. Um, and so the exceptional set for this is going to be of size 2 to the D. And so uh, they can set their, uh, set this uh, parameter D to be log n plus 1 and have a large enough set to interpolate. Um, and z to the 2k has a natural embedding in R. Um, basically if you if you want um, basically any any element like an input in z2k uh, you just look at it as an element of R. And so all of this you have uh, Shamir Sikachurian works over this ring. And uh, ACDUI is able to uh, was able to perfectly translate this protocol um, to the ring setting to work over Galois rings. Um, however, remember that 
this ring is an extension ring of uh, Z to 2K, and so you are working over a larger ring, and working over this larger ring, you do have some overhead. And um, in particular, this overhead uh, does mean that your, communi your communication complexity um, is going to be a factor D larger. Um, every time that you would normally send an element, um, when you're communicating an element, instead of just sending a Z2K element, you are sending a Galois ring element, um, which is going to be a factor D larger. And your computational complexity when you're, when you're multiplying two ring elements is going to be quadratic in D. Um, so every time you want to multiply uh, you know, these two Z2K elements, they're represented as ring elements, so now uh, you have to multiply these two ring elements together. And uh, I say essentially quadratic because in practice it's going to basically be quadratic. Um, you, could, you could use uh, things like Fast Fourier Transform um, to try to do a little better, but uh, the range of parameters is not going to really, you're not going to see a big difference using that. Um, so the main contribution of this work is that we give better encodings from Z the 2K into uh, Galois rings. So first let's look at how multiplication and ACD uh, EY works. And this is going to follow a sim like, similar structure to the, the multiplication that we saw before because uh, it's just an adaptation of um, the Beerly over the Heart paper. And so first, when you if you have some elements that you want to multiply, they're encoded into the ring um, just using the natural inclusion. And and from there, and so this iota is just going to be that uh, is just going to be you know taking your Z2K elements into R. Uh, this is the exact same protocol as uh, protocols before, but now all of our um, all of these elements are uh, mapped to our uh, ele or these Galois ring elements. And yeah, and so this is how they do multiplication. And you can think of this as basically, um, you know, this is the, the sub protocol for evaluating a multiplication gate, um, specifically a single multiplication in um, single multiplication um, of uh, uh, Z2K elements. But if you look at the uh, operations that you have to perform, you are uh, you are working over this extension ring, and so you're doing um, you're doing this this Galois ring multiplication, and you're getting one Z2K multiplication, and basically you have this larger ring that you're working over, and um, it's sort of wasteful that you're not uh, taking advantage of the fact that you're working over this larger ring, um, because uh, even though you want to do this small multiplication, you are paying this overhead for working in this larger ring. And so, a question sort of is, can you can you use the fact that you are working over this larger ring um, to do more than just a multiplication? Can you compute something more expressive? Um, can you replace the fact that you're um, computing a multiplication gate with maybe some sort of circuit? And that's something that we um, and we do that in this paper. Uh, in particular, instead of having, uh, we take this iota, and instead of mapping just a single Z2K element into R, uh, we now encode multiple into R. Uh, we, we can encode some parameter delta of them. And so let's talk about this. If we, um, basically what we want to do is we want to, uh, we want to take this protocol from before and we can uh, we can generalize it. So instead of just a multiplication gate, um, maybe it's just some subcircuit that we want to compute. And the subcircuit could be uh, you know could be a simple multiplication, but we want to say uh, it could be something else. And what we want are two encodings to replace our iota, um, which we're going to call in encoding and out encoding. And we want that the um, the encodings have this particular relationship, um, and um, I'll explain soon um, how this relationship ties in. But essentially, if we if we have these encodings, and 
we plug them and we replace iota and plug plug these encodings into the protocol that we saw before. Um, uh, notice that if we have if we have in encodings of an input x possibly a vector and in encodings of an input y um, and encoded uh, double shares, then we can compute an encoding of the circuit applied to um, these inputs. Uh, if this um, uh, if this relationship holds, and so um, and so the this turns this protocol from before that we were computing into um, um, for the for the same cost of what you would do um, before uh, plus um, the cost of these encodings, then you can compute uh, you can compute um, possibly a more general subcircuit. Um, you can compute um, you can compute some subcircuit C, and so the the task then just becomes uh, coming up with these um, in encodings and out encodings. Um, coming up with you know, how to encode these values um, and how to generate double share, like encoded double shares of this form. Um, and if you're able to do so, then following this outline, you can compute an encoding of the circuit applied to these inputs. And in this paper, uh, we give three. Um, so in this paper, we give three uh, specific encodings that we come up with. These encodings are actually. Um, I'm not going to go into the specifics of what they look like, but they're actually very, um, very simple to construct. Um, so the three encodings are inner product, SIMD, and flex. And compared to ACDUI, um, so when, um, so for um, consider there's uh, ACDUI when it takes in two inputs, um, it can comp it can compute. Uh, one multiplication, one output, and and that's um, and the two encodings. Uh, so two of the encodings that we give also take in two inputs, and um, uh, and they're able to compute so the inner product can compute inner products of length roughly d over two, and SIMD can compute um, roughly d to the 0.6 parallel circuits with one multiplication and one output each, and these are gonna. Um, and so this is assuming a single opening in R. When we say single opening, um, it's publicly revealing that Z. Uh, so it's essentially the, the, the protocol, just running one instance of that protocol from before. Um, and, for, uh, and if you have M inputs, um, using the protocol of ACDUI, you can compute a depth one circuit with M multiplications and a single output. And we give an encoding, um, a flex encoding, which can do the same except it can now output um, d. Uh, it can it can now have d outputs instead. Cool. So, um, so we give uh, explicit encodings, these three explicit encodings, and we also give uh, protocols for generating double shares in um, for these particular encodings. Um, we also give a way of um, uh, converting between our different encodings. So um, there's there's many, um, you know. So the, the, these dotted lines represent encodings that, um, sorry, represent uh, conversions and protocols that we don't explicitly give, but um, we give an outline for how to do this. Um, we also note that. Um, this framework, you can uh, you can create your own encodings to that fit into this as long as they um, as long as they um, have a particular relationship from before, and as long as you can um, as long as you have some way of encoding, some way of generating double shares, uh, this plugs right in. So um, you can possibly compute um, you can possibly do use this for other subcircuits. Um, this work, we also switch between a uh, giveaway of switching enco between encodings. Um, uh, so before we're talking about these uh, ring elements, we give away a switch between an encoded value in a ring and an encoded value in um, df to the d. Uh, specifically, um, we do this using uh, DAW bits, which are doubly authenticated bits. 
and here is some formalism if you want it, but at a high level, um, uh, parties are able to perform a local operation on um, shares within uh, the ring to um, if uh, you have shares of uh, random bits in this ring, you can perform local operation to get shares of the same bit in GF to the D. And um, having uh, sh having shares of um, these bits in both representation allows the parties to um, um, parties are able to switch between a particular coding in R and the same encoding um, in GF uh, to the D. Um, and protocols, uh, we, we do give protocols for generating these random bits um, in the paper. Another contribution of this work is that we do give a way of improved double share production. So the, the basic way of producing double shares um, is to apply a hypervertical matrix to a vector of double shared values S and then to check that the resulting vector of outputs um, R, um, to check that these are also valid double shares. Um, and so typically the way that the, the check in these prior works is done is that so many of these, um, out, these uh, R double shares are opened up and checked to be consistent with each other. And so you have to do this for every time you want to um, for every time you generate this vector of, um, vector of R's, you have to open up so many of them. Um, and so you, each time you produce um, T, um, T double shares. Um, and in this work, we uh, contribution of this paper is that um, rather than having to do individual checks every time you generate these R's, um, we give a batch check that can be applied over um, that can be used to check many, um, um, that can be checked, that can be used to check over, um, many of these, um, um, uh, um, so instead of having to check this R each time you, um, instead of having to check each time you produce this vector R, um, we give a check that can be done over many batches, and so, um, you can produce all of these vectors R, and at the end, we basically do a, um, a random, we do a random linear combination to check that the R's were uh, were produced properly. And so, um, the check is going to be independent of um, the number of sh actual shares generated. Uh, so it basically amortizes. And so, uh, each time you apply this hypervarial matrix, you're able to generate um, two T encodings, and then at the very end, uh, throw away some constant number of them. And the challenges of um, of such a of this batch check is that um, we are working over encodings, and so um, our hypervarial matrix needs to preserve these encodings. And because we're doing random linear combination, we need to be careful of zero divisors. We implemented these um, some of the protocols in our paper, specifically the uh, double share generation check. Um, and here are some of the running times. There's um, so there's a small overhead in generating double shares in this encode in this um, encoded double shares, um, but it's very clear that uh, this batch check does ha does yield a noticeable improvement. And so when you um, so uh, looking at the the total runtime, um, you do start to you do start to see that we do have a overall um, better um, uh, overall better running time for generating these double shares. And so the recap of our contributions is that we give encodings for uh, uh, Galois ring elements, uh, sorry, encodings for um, you know, for these Galois rings uh, to the KD uh, by exploiting the degree of this ring uh, to encode sub these sub-circuits of Z2K. And if you set um, k equals one, remember we mentioned this as a property of Galois rings, then um, then we uh, we can get um, f to the d um, and encode circuits over f two. Uh, and uh, our encodings, you can think of this as um, this is a framework for constructing other encodings and translating between them. 
Uh, we also give batch checks for encoded double shares, which give faster um, pre-processing for um, these style protocols that use these hyperinvertible matrices. Um, and a small thing to note, though, is that uh, um, our batch check does only have a statistical security. Um, and we also give uh, ways of producing random bits in GR, which can be used to create doubly authenticated bits um, from um, in this ring and this field.